Guys, thanks for listening to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. I also want to thank the following sponsors for their support of this podcast. Without them, it, this podcast would not be possible. I want to thank the Go Hunt Insider, uh, Lorenzo Sartini and his crew over at Go Hunt. They have created the Insider, which is an amazing tool for you guys that are researching all these different western states and looking for which units to apply for and put in for. Uh, they also have the Go Hunt maps, the Go Hunt gear shop. Uh, right now, go to GoHunt.com, click sign up for the Insider. Uh, use the J. Scott promo code. You're going to get a $50 Go Hunt gear shop gift card just for signing up. Go Hunt's been with me since the beginning of 2015 at, when I started this podcast. They've been a very loyal title sponsor of this podcast. And I want to thank them for their support. Make sure to go and sign up for the Go Hunt Insider. Use the J. Scott promo code. Guys, I also want to thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. That's K U I U dot com. Kuyu Ultralight Hunting is a direct to consumer uh, brand that sells the best ultralight hunting equipment and gear on the market today. Uh, you can go to K U I U dot com, Kuyu dot com, and order directly there on their website. I also want to thank Phonescope.com, Cheston, the guys over at Phonescope. Go to Phonescope.com. Anything you order there, use the J. Scott 23 promo code and you're going to get a 10% discount there at Phonescope. I also want to thank Lathrop & Sons, their custom boot system and custom footbed manufacturer. Uh, these guys are the boot doctors, the boot gurus. Um, they're very, very helpful. They know a lot about boots. Uh, I have switched this season to the Lathrop & Sons Encompass boot. Uh, that's what I've worn primarily on my coos deer and mule deer hunts in Mexico. And then I use the Mountain Hunter uh, for my sheep hunts, uh, specifically desert sheep uh, in any of that uh, more technical terrain. Uh, Lathrop & Sons has a phenomenal 3D mapping imprints and, and tracing kit. Uh, they make custom orthotics. Uh, just really, really comfortable, uh, very user-friendly boots and custom insoles. Uh, go to lathropandsons.com to find out more information. You can also check out Lathrop & Sons on Instagram. They have three custom boot options, the Mountain Hunter, the Mountain Hunter Elite, and the Mountain Hunter Encompass, as well as the High Country Synergy Footbeds Custom. Uh, they also make all of these custom footbeds in wide and super wide, as well as the boots, which is rare for a boot manufacturer. Reach out to the owners, Stephen and James at Lathrop & Sons at 618-544-8782. That's lathropandsons.com. Guys, I want to thank you for supporting this podcast. Love to hear your feedback. Uh, any questions you might have, you can reach out at jscottoutdoors at gmail.com. That's my email address. You can follow along on Instagram at jscottoutdoors. Always feel free to send me a direct message. Love hearing from you guys. And let's get right to these episodes. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today I have Pat McCarty of Shadow Valley Outfitters on the line. Pat, how you doing? Doing great, Jay. Thank you very much for having us on. You bet. I'm excited to talk to you about Arizona elk and antelope. Um, before we kind of dive into that, um, what are your overall thoughts on guys that are looking at this upcoming draw here next week? Um, and trying to figure out what they're going to apply for uh, for elk and antelope. What are your overall thoughts um, from an outlook perspective on, you know, maybe a 30,000 foot view of how things are, are shaping up and how things are looking as far as moisture and conditions going into the draw? Yeah, um, that's been the question, you know, that we've gotten most frequently uh, this year talking to hunters. And in compared to years past, uh, you know, I, I'm very, very optimistic about what the 2023 hunting season is going to look like, uh, the amount of moisture that we've had at the right time 
and also the amounts has just been awesome. Um, and then when you kind of piggyback that onto a really strong monsoon season last year, so the, the moisture in the soil is already pretty high. Uh, all the ponds were full, all the drinkers were full, and now you're stacking you know, anywhere from 12 to 24 inches of snow in some areas. It looks really good. Uh, I'm really excited to see, you know, what happens. The elk were in really great shape going into the winter. Uh, they've gotten good timely moisture and there's still plenty of feed. So I would definitely be applying if that's, you know, if anybody's not sure if they're going to apply or not, I would definitely apply. Okay. So all indicators um, from everything you look at is it, it should be a really good year. You talk about prior monsoon seasons, you talk about, you know, pond, you know, uh, tanks being full um, and moisture content in the soil, and then you have good winter moisture. Obviously, if, if the valve shut off between now and, and monsoon season, um, you know, we that wouldn't be good, but it, it looks like there's some forecasts for a, a handful of storms that we can see, you know, over the next couple of weeks to month out. Um, so, I mean, everything I'm hearing as well as indicating towards, you know, could be a really, really good antler growth year, uh, especially for the elk in Arizona. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent, you know, and like you said, you know, if it, if it turns off tomorrow and we don't get another drop, you know, that's, that's Arizona, that's, you know, hunting the West, you just, you never know, but going off the information that we have right now, putting into consideration what we've had in the past. I'm looking forward to a good green up in the spring. And, uh, you know, I still think there'll be plenty of food to get them in to where if, if we do have a dry spring, you know, there's plenty of water, they'll be fine. We just need some kind of monsoon uh, to have an average year. And if we have a decent monsoon and okay spring, we could very well be looking at a great year. You know, um, you spend a lot of your personal time um, guiding in Unit 9. Let's start there first. Um, how do you feel 9 has been over, let's say, the last two seasons? And how do any of those factors, of how, whether good or bad, how does that factor into what you see happening this year in Unit 9? I believe it's archery season starting September 15th and then... I believe it's muzzleloader season in Unit 9. What are your thoughts? I'm really excited about the hunt. Um, last year in 9, you know, we had great monsoon. We had great moisture. And then we had a couple storms that rolled through right previous to the hunt. And then during the hunt on the archery hunt that, you know, dropped inches of rain, um, the elk were spread out. Uh, they, were, they weren't having to go to water. You know, they were hitting their, their typical wallows and some of their spots that they like, um, but they didn't really have to do anything be, because of water, because it wasn't dry, you know. Uh, sometimes they can get pigeonholed and a lot of big bulls get killed off water just because, you know, that's typically a very arid area. Um, but that wasn't the case this last year. You know, all the archery bulls that we killed, I, we killed four archery bulls in there last year, and all of them were on call-ins. Um there wasn't, you know, we really didn't set water at all last year. They were, they were rutting super hard. Uh, and then when it came to the early rifle hunt, you know, the rut was great. And, you know, it, it was just a, a really fantastic year. Going into this year, I'm really looking forward to it because, once again, there's a, a good number of bulls that, you know, we didn't see get killed. Um, we didn't hear anything about them getting killed. And that's not to say that they didn't. But typically with bulls like that, you're going to know uh, if, somebody, if somebody kills them. Sure. And so there, there's a good handful of bulls in 9 and 10 uh, that we're looking forward to see what they look like this next year. Um, kind of give you a barometer of what the rest of the year is going to look like. Uh, with the elk being spread out like they were last year, I think success may have been down a little bit overall on the hunt, um, which is a good sign for this next year. Um, so it's definitely right there in the, the top of the list for me for archery hunts going into this year. Put it right there with 9, 10, 23, uh, even unit 1. Uh, it, they're all right there at the top of the list for me. Right on. Um, how did, in your opinion, 9 
you know, with the cameras um, not being allowed, how did that play into either hunters being successful or not being successful? And do you see that making any sort of monumental um, change going into this season or, you know, plus or minus, you know, pros or cons? Do you see the lack of, of being able to use cameras? Did that actually you know, help hunters? Did it hurt hunters? And what did it do to the elk in your opinion? Oh man, great question. So I think overall it was a good thing. Uh, and there's a few reasons for that. Um, I think success is probably a little bit down for that, uh, due to that, just because, you know, that, that was a huge tool and, you know, like it or not, those not being there, that, that took a tool away from hunters that was probably overused. Um, so that not being there probably spread hunters out um, and then added a, a, a level of difficulty that hasn't been there in 10 or 15 years. So some, some of the things that I noticed this year was I, I didn't see a lot of hunters scouting too like super early in the year. Like it just didn't see them because they weren't running cameras. Like I'm not driving up there, not running cameras to go look at bulls that are, are going to be moved. So I didn't see a lot of people up there in the summer. Um, then when it came to, you know, like that last week, I started to see some people come in, but even with, you know, like nine being, you know, a unit nine tag, high expectations. I noticed that like people were not as bent about killing a number and more right. or less, they were really looking forward to just like finding a good mature bull, right. um, which was really refreshing. And I saw a lot of guys kill bulls that they were very happy with, and they had no idea what they scored, um, which was cool, you know. In and essence, then, where it doesn't give them time to study them as much because they haven't gone had a you know a hundred pictures of them all all fall all summer and know exactly what the bull scored. It brought a little bit more mystique back to like it's just a good bull and i'm tickled absolutely you know like my hunter for example he killed a really nice mature bull i mean it's a big bull and you know we had passed some bulls passed some bulls and when the bull came in you know the bull came in he bugled at him in under 20 yards and he shot it and i walked up and i was like well what'd you think he goes I, man i just couldn't pass it up it was just such a cool experience you know and luckily it was a great bull but um, it, it added another difficulty, but also that mystique was really, really good to see again. And right. it also made like, you know, I didn't hear of any conflicts on water necessarily, you know, which was really cool. I'm sure there was probably something out there, but I, I wasn't seeing it wasn't prevalent like years past. Right. Okay. So, um, you're thinking that nine you think it'll be a better year this year than last year? Nine archery? I think, you know, it, man, it's really hard hard to beat last year. Like, it was a great – we we had a great rut. Um, it was really, really good. It kind of reminded me of, like, you know, 2007, seven nine somewhere in there. All that was really, really good. Um, so, I, I, I think this year going into it, if we get a decent monsoon, it's going to be a, a – a good to great year i thought last year was great um so i think we're on par for that again okay uh, the other thing i like jay is the moon phase going into this archery season it yeah looks it's really new good. on the 15th so this the opener will be a, a dark moon but that plays yeah. how does that play reverse when it's full on the 29th you know the opener of the early er, of the muzzleloader season you know, it was wild. This last year, we, we had to deal with some full moon between the archery and the early rifle, and I really didn't see much of a difference in level of activity. So you feel I mean, like it, once they really get fired up, which um, they should be fully firing on the 29th, it, it, it's enough that it, it, it doesn't make a huge difference. Correct. Whereas, I mean, whereas still, like, if it was full on the 9th or 10th or 12th when, the let's say, the season started, this year it's the 15th, then you'd have full moon and they're not really going, then you would see a big difference, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think, you know, like this last year, um, once they got going on and, and really getting after it, 
they would shut down for about an hour, hour and a half, but then they'd get right back up. You know, they, they weren't leaving their bedding area, but they were talking, they were moving, they were staying in there tight. And when the full moon came around, like it changed by maybe an hour. I mean, it really wasn't much difference. Your thoughts on, you know, nine historically over the years, the auction hunters have with the cameras, they not just nine specifically, but a lot in nine that auction hunters over the last, say, 20 years have really been able to, you know, pick on some of those unit nine bulls. Do you think without the cameras that some of those, um, well, let's just say, give me with the camera will not be there and 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 do you think some of those bulls will continue over the years to slip through yeah i I mean let's just call it the low-hanging fruit you know some some of the time when those bulls in you know 23 or or wherever a little bit more remote harder spot areas takes a little bit more when those when those areas aren't producing you know when you can go run 70 something cameras in unit nine and say all right well here's a bull that you know, is, is close to or worthy to your tag. Let's just go get this thing killed. He's hit water three days between these two drinkers. Um, that being gone has made a tremendous difference. Um, you're, you know, the top end bulls are still there. They're making it through. There's still going to be auction bulls killed out of nine. It's genetics. They're there. You know, it, it is what it is, but unit nine as a whole is trending in the right direction again. Um, Game and Fish has cut tags, uh, taken a few out of there. Uh, it, I'm really, really excited for what is going on up there. All right, let's talk about some of the other units, and I'll just let you kind of go through them. You know, 10, I know you guys like 8, you know, 7, uh, 7 West, 7 East. Um, just kind of go through them a little bit. Yeah, so I've got a couple, I've got a little bit of stuff here. You know, the top end units, Unit 1, we were in there last year, and we had some tremendous bulls. I expect Unit 1 to be really, really good this year. You know, they've got great moisture. Um, it's going to be a strong rut. It was going from the very beginning last year, even with a little bit of a wonky moon. I think Unit one's going to be really good. You know, if, if I had an archery tag, early rifle tag, I would go into there looking for, you know, that that big bull, you know, whether that, if, if that to you, that's 350 or 375, I would go in there looking for that big mature bull on that, on that hunt. I really, really am high on the unit one tag. Um, top end bulls, you, you know, unit 23, it's always going to produce north and south. Um, they're having great moisture again. Um, ben was over there for the, the early rifle and also the late rifle and the archery. We killed a couple of tremendous bulls on those hunts, and, you know, that, that place is just very, very special. Between the Indian Reservation and the peace and solitude of just the terrain, um, you know, bulls can hide. Big bulls can not be discovered. Um, so it gives them a lot of opportunity to, to get big. Um, so, as you know, that's always going to be a special place. Uh, unit 10, I, I'm loving Unit 10 still. You know, I'm coming back from Unit 8. Um, I was up in 8 and 10, and it's muddy everywhere. Um, there's moisture. There's feed. Even with the amount of cattle that's on the range, there's plenty of feed. There's going to be some great bulls uh, out of, you know, 10 and 8, uh, for that matter. 8 is going to be in that middle tier for me. I think, you know, last year we did great in there. Like, the rut was fantastic. It was awesome. You know, Julius came and killed that big, big bull with us um, on the archery hunt. We killed another real big bull on that late rifle hunt. And, you know, it, honestly, like eight last year was just like, it was one of those hunts where, you know, just everything went right. But I'll, I'll caution, you know, I'll throw a little disclaimer in there on unit eight. Unit eight typically is 50 50, man. It could be good, it could be great, or it could be really, really bad, you know. So it's not, it's not in my top real tier finicky. of units. It's real finicky. Yeah. It's not in my top tier of units because of that. You know, the biggest bull that we killed across the state last year was out of unit eight. You know, big, big bull. But that could have been a drastically, drastically different hunt with a change in the weather. You know, if, if it got warm and, and we didn't get those rainstorms to come through and really fire them up, that could have been very, very different. Right. Um, so that's why it's in my middle tier. Um, I really like the 5B archery hunt. Um, I think that's going to be another good one. Last year, 
it was a little bit pocketed with rut activity. Um, you know, we had Elliot Anderson and Clayton Black over there, and they had a they had a really good hunt. Um, but it was pocketed as far as the rut activity goes. Hunting some good bulls, but kind of like that unit eight. When it's good, it's really good. But when it's not, it's pretty darn tough. Um, but that's something to consider. Both those units are something to consider for non-residents in like that 15 to 18 points where they're probably not going to top catch the top tier because of point creep. And, you know, a lot of guys just age out of chasing uh, the top units. Unit 8, 5B, 7 West, um, those are all units that they really need to consider. And then just know what the expectation is on those hunts, you know. Um, what else? Um, going through some notes here. Um, these muzzleloader hunts, you know, we're getting a lot of questions, Jay, about muzzleloader. A lot of non-residents, even residents, asking about restrictions. You know, right now Arizona has is more liberal on re restrictions with muzzleloaders compared to you know Colorado and New Mexico. Some of these states that are going to to no optics on the muzzleloaders at all. That's that's not the case yet in Arizona, but there's definitely been hints that that's coming. Um, so for muzzleloader hunts this year, you know, like unit nine is going to be a muzzleloader. It's not going to be a late ri or early rifle. Um, you know, that's my top pick for muzzleloader hunts this year. You know, for residents, it's going at 21 to 22 points. Non-residents is, you know, basically max, um, you know, and they're going over three tags. Uh, unit 27, that's a, a good, I think that's going to be a really good muzzleloader hunt this year. Uh, it's that right after the archery hunt, so it starts late September. It's going to take somewhere around 19 for residents and 23 for 23, 24 for non-residents. You know, and I'm getting all these this point data off Go Hunt. You know, they do a fantastic job um, with their 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 tools on the site. Then, so then you've got so you got nine and you got uh, 27 for those early muzzleloader tags that I really like. Then you've got, it gets a little bit different. So you got the Unit 10. It's like that mid-season muzzleloader hunt. And uh, we really like that hunt. So, you, you, you know, it's typically 75 tags, somewhere in there. So it's 75 tags, as you know, Jay, and Unit 10 is nothing. Man, nothing. You know, right. you're not going to see many people on that hunt at all. So it's a really, really fun hunt. Um, and you can go in there and you can target big bulls. You know, you can go in there looking for a bull that's 350 plus. Uh, if you do your homework, it's possible to kill a, a good, good bull. So then, so then there's the 6A hunt. And there, we talk to a lot of non-residents that are totally turned off and residents that are turned off by the sheer number of hunters on uh, these late rifle tags. And, and for good reason. Like, if you're applying for a late rifle tag, just know you're going to see other hunters. Like, no matter what you do, where you go, what unit, almost always are you going to have other hunters in the area. It, it just is. There's too many tags to not see people. But we really, that, that 6A, um, the 6A muzzleloader tag, it's taken around nine points for a resident. So, you know, guys, yeah, are, Jack, they don't want to do a late oh, rifle, no, but they don't want to, you know, wait another five to seven years for early archery in a top tier that's an option and you can go in there and you can see a good number of bulls you know they're looking for that peace and solitude you can hunt those ridges uh some of the canyons and see some really nice bulls and, and good numbers you know and for non-residents it's taken somewhere around 10 points so that's definitely something to consider um and then lastly there's a new hunt it's there's only five permits so it's kind of silly to talk about but it's the seven east uh, muzzleloader hunt, and it's new this year. Yeah, you know, I, I it starts October sixth. I think that could be a really fun hunt, but it's only five permits, so that's yeah, that's a tough one right there. Let's um let's shift gears and talk antelope. I know you love antelope. Um, go through your list there on antelope. I do love antelope, and it breaks my heart um, just talking about some of the antelope stuff. So. I've got some numbers here just for perspective um, on antelope and the direction antelope hunting in the state of Arizona is headed, which is not encouraging. 
you know, for example, Jay, there's 140 bighorn sheep tags uh, in the state of Arizona last year for the 2022 season. And those are considered once in a lifetime tags, right? Like you, you draw, you kill, you're done. Now it is possible to draw two, but typically it doesn't happen. Right now in Arizona, we only have 551 allotted antelope tags. And those are not a once in a lifetime tag. So point creep on those and considering where we're at with the amount of high bonus point holders that are out there, it's, it's going to get really, really tough for people to ever draw an antelope tag if they ever do. Um, so out of the 551 tags, there's really only 37 non-resident tags that exist. And that's like up to 37. That doesn't guarantee that 37 will go to those non-residents. So it's, I'm not trying to discourage people. I'm trying to give you, you know, the right track as a non-resident. If you want to come hunt antelope in Arizona, you need to be considering like on the rifle hunt units one, seven, unit 10 and 19 a, and those are, those are units that will actually have a non-resident tag in them. A lot of them won't have a non-resident tag at all. Um, for the muzzy, non-residents you need to be looking at 2b or unit 8 but be careful with the unit 8 because there's two hunts there and the second hunt is typically not good um the first hunt's prior to the archery elk hunt the second hunt is after and it's during the muzzleloader cow hunt and there's really not many good bucks left over you know unit 8 it's rough anyways for antelope but it's an option for someone to draw a tag without you know so they don't you know, miss a tag completely. Um, and then for the archery hunt, non-residents really have three or two choices. You can draw the unit one or you can draw the unit 10 tag. There's 30 permits total in each of those on the archery. So up to three of those can go to a non-resident. So it's rough. Um, but that being considered, you know, if, if you draw those tags, you know, if you do your homework, you can kill some decent bucks. You can kill some nice bucks. As far as quality, Arizona is also, I, I would say, we're not trending upwards. I don't think we're trending downwards near as much. We're kind of stabilized. We're, I would say we're kind of flatlined. There's still some really good bucks to be killed. Um, the last couple of years with better moisture, we're seeing better fawn recruitment. Last year, I think, Jay, and I, you and I talked uh, during an antelope hunt and we were seeing great fawn recruitment like all over there was great great uh numbers i just came back like i say i'm in the lower portion of eight and there's a great big herd of antelope right now um so i, I like numbers but we're still not you know i don't think we're ever going to rebound to where we were you know early 2000s late 90s i just don't see that happening mainly because of human encroachment and you know if it's flat they build a house Sure. Um, but with that being said, for my, my top picks for the residents um, that can draw the tags, I, I love the 5B hunt. Um, 19A or 19B, they're on par with each other. The, the problem there is just finding huntable land, whether it's the archery hunt, the muzzleloader hunt, or the rifle hunt. I would caution uh, r rifle hunters, the guys that are – have a whole lot of bonus points i would caution you to not apply for the 19b rifle hunt because by the time the archery hunt comes through and then the muzzleloader hunt comes through you're going to be looking at bucks and you're going to be fairly disappointed in, in what's left over um that's not to say that you know bucks don't make it through but playing the odds with the advancements in archery equipment it's pretty rough so um i st i still think the 5a 4b those are good options to go hunt, you know, look for an 80 inch buck unit 10, um, is, is another really good option. And that, you know, has the highest number of tags. So, and the sheer size of unit 10, there's going to be a few good bucks that are killed out of there. Um, but it's not like it was mid two thousands, you know, when, when you go up there looking for something real special. Overall antelope, maybe the best days are behind us right yeah and that just i mean it breaks my heart they're so fun to hunt you can hunt them all day long it's really good 
you know, it's sad for a lot of these guys that are at 28 points and they're still holding on, you know, and then they draw the tag, you know, like a unit 10 tag. Well, you know, man, my buddy drew this in late 90s. It was great. He killed a 90-inch buck. And it, you know, it's like, man, I'm so sorry. But, like, part of my responsibility as a guide is to give you realistic expectations. And that that is almost unrealistic at that point in a lot of these units. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Pat, I really appreciate you breaking down elk and antelope. I want to give you any last second um, thoughts here and uh, then let people know how they can reach out to you and, and uh, chat more before this draw deadline is up. Yeah. Um, you know, just in closing, there's not going to be anything that changes weather-wise to make you hold out. You know, it's not like we're in a real dry cycle to where we're waiting to see if we get a storm. We've got the storms. We've got the moisture. The soil has plenty of moisture. We're going to have a good green up. Get your apps in. Don't wait to the last minute because you cannot rely on, you know, the system working at 11 o'clock at night on the 14th. There's, <laughs> there's going to be problems. Get your apps in sooner rather than later. If you have any questions, you can call myself. Uh, you can call Bob Dykeman, Ben Brochu. We're happy to answer any of your phone calls. Um, you can get, you know, my number. It's real easy, 928-533-1903. Um, you can reach us on Instagram or Facebook. Um, we're happy to chat if you want, you know, just about any of it. Hunting, questions, gear. We're happy to talk about any of it. So, Jay, we really appreciate you. Um, and, you know, Bob's number is 928 925 three four three seven and then ben's number is uh five two zero nine zero seven six zero seven nine so that's all i got and uh good luck to everybody in the draw i think it's going to be a good year awesome pat shadow valley outfitters uh pat mccarty thanks for coming on god bless you buddy take care okay thanks jay have a great day all right bye